So, um, it's a broad title. Um, I will only can give you a glimpse of, of um, this topic because it's um, as big as the region it is. And we will soon know what this small little picture is meaning inside the big um, Euro Delta. I brought you um, four topics. Did you see the slides move now? Hopefully. Yes. Okay. Um, a small story from the Rhineland, a part of the Euro Delta, and then I try to bring you um, and two steps behind the scenes um, about design or spatial design, as I like to call it, as a heuristic method, um, a method to find things, not only to design things. And in the end, uh, we will try to um, figure out, or I will try to give you a, a hint how you could design in the Euro Delta. But I'm also very happy about all the overviews Paul showed because they are a very, very important step forward for this process. So what I can tell you, <clears throat> I can give you some small tales about the Rhineland. It's already in itself a very, very big region, which, which was designed uh, three years ago. Uh, between Düsseldorf and, and Bonn. It's uh, 6 million inhabitants in this region, but compared to the Euro Delta, it's a very, very small scale. So what we did there as an office uh, was um, creating the Rhenish ladder. So a, a structure, a mega structure as a, as a, thinking, um, a thinking model to overcome problems of, um, I think also what Paul said, this kind of going on with things. So we discovered in the Rhineland, in this region, that um, the authorities and people were doing small decisions, small things, which added up to a irre irreversible development. And we tried to give them a picture how to overcome this and how to move um, on in another way. And so we developed this kind of structure, a ladder, which has spars and rungs and should be somehow um, was made to have a polycentric relief for these metropolitan areas like Cologne and Düsseldorf and Bonn, which suffer under enormous pressure um, from outside. And um, this was the first time we used such a scheme for a big, big region. But I will try to, to tell you in very short what's behind it. So one core element was um, to to identify smaller cities, which are already cities like Brühl, Siegburg, Leverkusen, Mönchengladbach, to relieve and to, to develop further, but also to relieve this pressure for urban um, living in the metropolitan cores. This was one of the big issues, but the other issues, which you might have also in the Euro Delta, is how to deal with this regional, these regions with, which don't have so much growth which maybe have many single family houses and need maybe also a strategy um, to develop. And we call this uh, kind of spatial communities, um, which should um, develop together in, in a kind of sustainable way. And then there was this kind of ladder and we were often asked, okay, why do you um, yeah, draw such a picture over our region? And for us, it was a kind of, um, a search area. So within these letters, there were the good connections and the, the search places to, to go on with settlement development and to not so much go on outside the ladder. So it was also a possible way of collaboration, which formed this kind of very colorful spatial design or spatial strategy for, for this region. So what is very important, um, as Cecilia told, it was not one concept. We were not commissioned to, to do this for the, for the um, alone. So it was not this kind of the designers have a plan, but it was a competition of ideas among four teams like Must, Orange Edge, Van de Wetering and Urbanista, which is somehow the same thing you will do in the next one and a half days. And it was also not a picture to say, okay, this is implemented now. It was an approach which then was consolidated um, by Christa Reicher and her office um, to a recommendations of action 
in this kind of agglomeration column concept Cologne Bonn. You see it's a, a more abstract picture and there are more uh, kind of rules in which um, this region wants to follow. And it was also not a design, but it was a big process of two years. And this is what we call joint learning processes. So with this competition of ideas, with many cycles of elaboration and a kind of rhythm of design and discussion, we try to tackle um, complex pro problems such as um, the Euro Delta development. And the important thing is that um, even if their ideas and designs are very, very important, it's, it's, um, there is no winner. It's not about having a winning design, but a recommendation of actions and to test the feasibility of certain ideas which you might have, but the mo most important thing, and this is also belongs to your work, is the stage, to have a stage and an agora for discussion, so to have a basis um, for discussion about amongst different actors. So the question is, of course, in this process, what is the role of design and what about this kind of spatial design? And the tasks for design um, Normally, you would say, okay, it's mo mostly about space. So I have a region like the Euro Delta. I have to, to map things. I have to de develop um, um, ideas for, the, for its future. Um, I have to solve problems. But actually, it's also about time and organization. So you have the time as planning object itself. When comes what? What is a stepwise development towards this goal? And how could it look like? in 20, 30, 40 years, um, which huge challenges ahead, as also Paul mentioned. And the organization, um, you also heard in the last um, presentation of Cecilia, you have processes, you have these multi-actor networks across borders, you have very multiple goals, and it's more a dissent than a consent. So they are not in line, they, they um, conflict, and of course, you also have to think about financing and implementation. You could also draw this triangle differently and say, okay, this is dealing with complex situations and complexity itself um, is characterized by interrelations, uh, emergence, so the, that this kind of design um, um, object you design, so the regions, they, they develop itself if you do something or not. And this makes them very unpredictable. And for this, the design or spatial design, as I call it, the contribution um, for design is, is not only to, to develop conceptual proposals, like maybe you would think design is, but it's much more also to explore the problem situation, the situation itself to explore it, and also to support the clarification process or discourse among the actors. So design in this way, spatial design, I, I call it, is, a, is more a process than an object. And that's why I call it heuristic. And heuristic is the method for finding things. So design as a way to find things, not only solutions, but also problems or interrelations between things. So this is the way I'm um, calling it. And why is it such a good tool to find things is funnily the failure. So the, the first thing is this kind of solutions approach. So you not only map things and analyze things, but you try to solve things. And if we call take um, complex problems, I like to call it also a cloud or a wicked and ill-defined problem solution, something you, you can't see through yet. And the, 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 the strength of design is that you're framing it, you're you are starting somewhere, you have this kind of solution attempts in many ways, you take decisions, preliminaries, and you come to a point and either you have a success and a suitable solution, but more often and mostly you fail. And this failure is a very productive and, and important failure because it helps you to reframe, to learn something more about your design object about the situation and start from another point. 
I think you witnessed this um, many times when you designed or, or tried to solve something. And, and somehow this is the way the heuristic in spatial design works. And I want to encourage you to try and fail because this is sometimes the most productive way to produce knowledge. There's also like a kind of, it means also that design is not always the same, but it's a bit different throughout a kind of a this clarification process. So there are ways you could somehow frame your design. It's maybe more to understand first, maybe it's about to play in the beginning. So to be very bold, um, you have to decide what your problem is you want to tackle. You have, to, of course, to design a prototype. You have to prove it, you have to reflect it. So the design changes in the process of elaboration, but also you have a kind of a, a need to translate or to, to, to confront and, and um, argue with the agora, so with the, with the actors, you have to confront them in the beginning. You have to test your, um, your, your ideas and you have to also in the end uh, retranslate your findings into the logic of the actors. So what might it be to design on a regional or supra-regional scale? Of course, um, so what I can say that this regional scale on the left side is already a big scale and the scale on you, you are working on is much bigger. So I can only give you some hints of products and approaches I would encourage you to do. So of course there is the plan, so spatial concepts. And, but of course, for these one and a half days, you are not asked to draw such a plan. And it's also not always needed. Um, of course, it looks maybe nice, you have, or you have your opinion about it. Much more important it is to, to develop your main idea. And sometimes um, it's more clear and it's also much better to to think with your hand and to use your hand and use these hand drawings or very easy principles to, to think about such a big region and to shape an idea which is important to you. What you can also do is then to combine it with um, maps and styles to show details and to go, to go into the space. But I would encourage you to somehow stay this kind of quick and dirty at least for these next days. At this level, it's also um, the map is only one measure. And sometimes even if you go that big, it's not the right measure. So there are principles of development. Uh, um, forgive me the German on the slides um, where you can show how a region should develop. So what is the what are the rules? What are things which somehow um, repeat all the time like um, to densify around um, around the stops of railway tracks, but also, as Paul said, um, maybe not to build any more houses alongside railway tracks, which um, which have uh, good traffic, because that would be a deadlock. And what you also can do, and what we somehow made very good um, had very good experiences with, is kind of task to 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 describe tasks for spatial situations, like in this. Spatial communities, I called, told you before, in this rural area, we, we had tasks for certain types of communities. So the very small, the bit, little bit bigger to say, how should they, they develop? And um, so it's like, uh, what, what is somehow the common, the common development goals for these types of spatial developments or situations? And uh, that could be also land uses like, like um, um, like the ones um, Paul showed before. So this is about products. Of course, there are much more like timeframes and, and not, uh, actor networks. But the thing I want to encourage you is to um, ask questions and ask many questions. So stay curious and ask yourself why. I think you already did. And this, the second one is um, play. So use this, this kind of design, it's, it's the question which underlies every design process. It's the question, what if? So what is if? And it's, it's a kind of playful um, stay and 
try to be playful and reflect afterwards what you find out. This is a very important thing. And the second thing is to change perspective. So the one thing is um, explore your task in different scales. So you have a working perimeter and you have to, to, to get its context in a quite bigger perimeter, and, but you have to test details of your ideas in, in, a, in a smaller perimeter. And the other one is um, to, to have these different perspectives about space, time and organization, to look at your, at your task from different angles and to find out what is maybe the problem. It might be that it's not space. So you have a very big task ahead and um, I'm also, I'm envy you in a way that I would like to do it the next one and a half days. I'm also not envying you because it's a very short time and it's uh, super hard questions and a very big scale. And I just wanted to, show you in the last minutes how it could work, what I told you now in, in this scale um, with the things that I know about this region. So when we did this kind of corridor Rotterdam Genoa, we discovered that there's maybe um, a connection, a, a third high capacity rail connection between Antwerp, Rotterdam and the Rhineland missing. And there's kind of this region around Viersen, Fenlo near Eindhoven, where there are many tracks, but there is no connection. So this could be a question you could ask yourself, why, why isn't there a cross-border connection? Then you might find out that there's a project um, with three curves to connect all these railway lines um, to have a connection to, to the Iron Rhine and to Antwerp. But if you look a bit deeper now in Viersen, in this um, uh, city of Viersen, you might find out that maybe it's a very, um, though it's a very clever um, solution, it will heavily um, have consequences in the local scale because the trade trains would run directly through a city causing a lot of emissions. So of course, that's maybe not what you want, it, want and it's certainly something and not what the city of Fiersen wants. But if you look up to another, to this bigger scale, you might find out that somehow the connection there makes actually sense because the Betuwe or the German part of the Betuwe line is already overloaded as, as well as the, uh, the, um, the connection between Aachen, Liege and Antwerp. So you might need something new here and there are many possibilities. And so the what if question you could have in this very, very, um, um, uh, detailed question, of course, is now how you could alter this solution um, of having the small curves like here, um, sorry, my mouse there, in, in, um, without um, the negative consequences. So what are different routes to connect these railway lines? That could be maybe now a very technocratic, but it could be a question in this topic. What I hoped um, I gave you a glance of um, is that you can use design really to find things. I want to equip you to try and fail because then you will learn. And I, I want to give you this impression that design is exploring possibilities of action. That's the thing when you approach these big regions. So in this way, thank you very much. And um, yeah. Let's have a discussion if we have time. <laughs>